views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to Bronx Talk. As the dialogue goes on about what are we going to do with our public schools? Are they going to be open? Are they going to be closed? Are students going to go in class? Are they going to study virtually? Uh, at the same time, uh, there are colleges and college students in uh, the Bronx that uh, are currently attending school and uh, also with the same kinds of questions. How to stay safe? Are we studying virtually? Are we uh, going to class? Are we living in a dorm? And uh, so what we did uh, this evening was we brought together four college students, each with a connection to the Bronx, but each uh, coming from a, uh, a different uh, perspective. And uh, so let me introduce each one of them. We'll give you a little background. Uh, we'll start with uh, Carlos Rico, who attends uh, Fordham University. Uh, he is the leader of the uh, Bronx COVID-19 Oral History Project, uh, has been enmeshed with uh, social justice and activism, is one of the project leaders on the Bronx COVID-19 Oral History Project. So by long introduction, uh, hello, how are you, Carlos? How are you doing? Thank you for, thank you for letting me on. Okay, so now here, the, this is a young man who lives in Florida, but dorms in the Bronx, okay? Uh, up next um, is uh, Sienna Jones. She attends the University of Albany, SUNY Albany. I'm happy to say she's a journalism major with a minor in film studies. She is an intern on BronxNet, and she actually works on uh, one of my other programs, The Bronx Buzz, uh, the vice president of the Albany Student uh, TV uh, Network. And so, Sienna Jones, nice to have you. Hey, Gary, how are you? So here's, here's a student who is here, but uh, attends virtually in Albany. You'll notice that each one is uh, different. Um, and then uh, this uh, student is very close to my heart because uh, Lehman College is my alma mater, and she is a uh, Lehman College student. Uh, uh, Sheila Davila is a senior chemistry major with a public health minor. She was on the swim team for four years and uh, became part of a sorority and worked with her professor doing chemical research. Sheila, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Great. And Sheila attends Lehman, and we're going to find out whether it's in class or virtual, you know. And um, then the, the fourth student that we have with us, also close to my heart because we live in the same building, um, it is uh, Justin Naeem Hurdle Price. Um, he attends Hofstra University as a psychology major. He decided to live on campus because he wanted to learn how to safely uh, live in the world while being in the midst of a dangerous pandemic. So he really was doing like college as an experiment. Uh, and so he lives in Hofstra or, or dorms in Hofstra, but of course he's from the Bronx. Uh, nice to have you with us, uh, Naeem. Uh, always good to see you, my friend. It was an honor. Thank you so much. All right, let's uh, just get started. I, I got some numbers here and the numbers across the country for colleges are uh, scary, really. Uh, more than 150 colleges, that's 150 colleges across the country have reported at least 100 cases uh, including uh, dozens that have seen spikes in uh, recent weeks uh, as uh, dorms have reopened. It's, a, it's an issue and classes have started. Um, and uh, since July, there are an additional total 81,000 additional cases of COVID. So uh, let's start with you, Carlos. So now let's say you're from Florida. Um, you live um, at an apartment in the Bronx. Uh, we appreciate that. We like that. So the first thing is, um, what's it like uh, living in the Bronx and uh, especially during this particular period of time attending college? It for sure is different. And there was a lot of pressure from my peers and my fellow students about coming back to campus um, with the onset of all this going on. Um, the pandemic and whatnot. We've been a lot more engaged on social media and have found ourselves rooted in this conversation all the time. 
take that um, as you may, but there are a lot of students who are very concerned and very um, cognizant of our presence in the community, us as Fordham students. And so um, we are taking a lot of steps, uh, most of us are taking a lot of steps on trying to um, you know, mask up all the time, like, okay, do you bring your hand sanitizer? Is, is everything well? There's, but there's a lot of pressure and fear there. And of course, um, you know, there are people that we know who are a little bit more lax. They want to get back to being a college kid again. And we all do, but it's, it's pretty worrisome, you know, and, and we're still, you know, doing our best to figure, figure it out about it. How, how widespread, I mean, we see the, the pictures on TV and we see what's going on in many places. And listen, I think I saw a picture at a restaurant in Belmont and it looked like there were a lot of presumably Fordham students hanging mm -hmm. around that restaurant in rather unsafe conditions. How widespread is that notion? I mean, it sounds like you're very responsible about it, but how widespread is that notion to, you know, kind of break those guidelines and take chances? You know, it's, it definitely, there are some pockets of, of people doing that. And there are, there are, you know, people who, who call out and you'll see like that pic. I know that picture that you're referring to on Belmont. Um, but for the most part, I, what I, what I'm loving to see is that we are, we're checking each other on it. We're, we're messing each other. We're messaging each other. Right. So if someone's doing something like that. We're like, Hey, like, look, we don't want to go home. I don't want to go back to Florida. I had to, when I came here, I had to quarantine for 14 days and I was, you know, stuck here. I couldn't see my other friends. So, um, you know, we're trying to do all we can um, to make sure that we're staying safe, staying healthy. And so far the numbers are showing that there's only four cases here at Fordham. I mean, you, 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 know, you, took, you took the words right out of my mouth. I looked up all the colleges that are represented huh? here. There are only four cases at Fordham, but I'll give you a comparison. SUNY Oneonta is, is the largest in the state with 597 cases. Um, think about what that does to the town of Oneonta, a small town that lives off that college, you can be sure. Um, and, and then on a larger scale, University of Georgia, more than 3,000 cases. University of Alabama, 2,200 cases. Um, I thought it was interesting. Cornell has 92. And in the same town, Ithaca has five. A little, mm -hmm. I, we're going to talk about how the colleges deal with it. I do want to go around the room a little bit and uh, talk to everybody. Um, let's um, uh, stay in the Bronx then and talk to Sienna Jones. Um, now, so you're in the Bronx as well. Um, what's the deal with Lehman now? Are you virtual all the time? Are you, you know, uh, do you go into class? Uh, you know, which of course means bus or subway or transportation for most of the students. Uh, tell me about what life is like attending college at Lehman. Um, well, right now we're doing <clears throat> virtual learning. So we do everything through like Blackboard um, Ultra and most of the professors use that or they use Zoom. And it's been, it's been a really um, different transition, especially for certain classes. Um, as a science major, it's very hard to adapt because you're used to being in the lab to conduct these certain, you know, lab reports or these certain experiments to then, you know, um, expect to write a whole lab, a whole report for it, but you're not there, so you're not, you know, doing the experience, so it's different. This is another, you raise a very important point, which we'll go about and get everybody. Um, does it, is it hurting your education? You know, the fact that you have to do it that way. In my opinion, it is. It mm -hmm. is because, you know, we're not doing it by ourselves. We're given all the numbers, all the, cal you know, all the data. We're not doing it. We're not experimenting. We're, in a way, not to say that we're not learning because we still have to, but it's just different. It's not, it's nothing compared to the in-person experience, you know, and it's something that just you can't get back. You know, many people can use many different resources and figure out a way to get the answer easier than you would in class, you know, right. if it was during an exam and, you know, with certain situations like that. And then comes like the, the question, like, are you really learning at that point? You're getting an A or a B in a subject that you think that you're really experienced in and and then, and then if you, if you um, uh, leave, you're a public health minor, if you leave and then go into the field, and you didn't kind of get that experience or that lab experience or even how to behave in a lab and how professionals interact. I mean, that, that, that's a, a very ser serious stuff. Would you rather, 
And now let's say Lehman College, like all of the universities represented here, only had eight cases. Now, maybe those could be staff. I mean, we don't know who that is. Um, but that's largely because the students are not gathering. Would you rather at least have some in class, like maybe come up with ways of keeping people clean or, or safe, and you would have to take the train or the bus or whatever you'd need to get to, to school? You'd interact. Your risk would be larger. Would you rather that? I mean, would, would um, I So... Uh... Lehman is letting, I think, 10% of the classes, um, well, certain classes go back to campus. I know one of my friends, he is a, I think, um, a graphic design major. And so he has like some classes that he has to do like art stuff and like, you know, in person. And he goes, I think, once a week and he's allowed on campus. But um, I'm not sure. I feel like I would prefer to, for our lab classes to, um, be in person at least, you know, lecture wise, we can do it from home. But then comes like the question of safety. And I don't know. I think yeah, I that's, prefer it's a, to it's a big chance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very big chance. I mean, imagine taking your precious education and having to make a decision on that based on something that's an even greater consideration, your health. I mean, my goodness, what kind of a choice that is? It's very difficult yeah. <laughs> you know, you have, have my support. So let's talk to Sienna Jones. She had her whole college experience disrupted because she's a dorm student up at SUNY Albany. Um, it's a lot of fun up there. My brother attended, so I, I know uh, people have a good time up there. They do get an education. And now you're here in the Bronx. Do you um, mourn the fact that maybe you're not getting um, what you might be getting, especially as a journalism major? Um, honestly, like I've had a pretty positive experience with this so far. I was worried about, um, you know, how my classes would translate being remote, especially being a journalism major. We do a lot of hands-on in-person stuff. And so I was worried that like, you know, there would be some negative effects to me not being in person. But um, so far, like everything's been pretty okay. And honestly, like being home, I feel like I've been able to actually do like more than I would if I was up on campus. So um, yeah, I, I've been pretty. And, and listen, I, I, I did mention CN as an intern at Bronx then. It also, mm -hmm. because you're not in Albany, gave you an opportunity to, to spend uh, this semester, you know, getting better. Right. I'll always be prejudiced toward it, a better education that you'd get anywhere else because you work, you're working on one of my TV shows. Um, right, yeah. um, uh, now, now, as far as the dorms in Albany, they're all closed, completely closed. Uh, no, the campus is actually yes. open. So there's people that are living up there right And now. so this yeah. was your choice, your, your and your family's choice to um, have you uh, stay at home or? or um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I chose to stay home, uh, especially because um, all my classes were exclusively online. So I oh, didn't so. really think that made sense to go back up there and, well, you know, pay for room and board when my classes would have been online anyway. Yeah, so. Right. So all you, all you and aside from maybe you have a little bit of better time and we'll talk about social life in a minute, but all you'd really be getting uh, was, was more risk. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah probably don't want <laughs> to do that. Yeah. All right. Well, this, um, and by the way, let's see. So um, Albany only has 12 cases. Uh, let's mm -hmm. uh, go to um, my friend, uh, Naeem uh, Hurdle Price. Um, nice to have you with us. Now, you made the decision to go to live in a dorm. Um, now, uh, of the four colleges here, Hofstra has 34 cases that are on the record. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, what it's like in the dorms and are you scared? Are you safe? And then, of course, oh, yeah, classes. Let's talk about that. So, well, I, off record, I just want to say I am scared personally. Um, this is a very serious pandemic. This is a very scary one. You know, it can affect anyone and everyone of all ages. Uh, it doesn't matter really what's going on personally in terms of, you know, medical history or anything like that. You know, if it strikes, it strikes. Um, and so I personally am someone who, you know, worries about my health. And, it, you know, I really thought about the decision in, in the sense of education or health. But um, I decided to go education knowing that I personally am going to be doing what I can to take care of my health. And so I'm very big on wearing a mask, having hand sanitizer, stuff like that. I'm not going to any sort of, you know, get togethers or any anything like that. Um, you know, I'm really just here 
you know, with my boys who are very much just about the same stuff, you know, they want to be safe and they want to be smart and they want to just get to work. Uh, so we spend a lot of time here in our room. We have a great time with each other. Um, it's been all right. I think another thing that's been great is, you know, uh, just like Carlos had said, we check each other in terms of when people are not having masks, when people are not really following the rules and stuff like that. That's really been a great like, like family, really like family, because I mean, I know yeah. in my own home, uh, you know, other people, I say, did you wash your hands? You know, were you yeah. safe, you know, where were, and, and so that, to me, that that's a very healthy thing. Do you, and, and, and it's the same question I asked Carlos, who are in this kind of um, scenario, do you see a lot of unsafe behavior? And, and uh, is there a large wing of people who are, um, uh, you know, not, not taking frankly as seriously as you might be? So actually, not really. Me personally, I haven't seen too much of anything, you know, that's um, unsafe. Anyone that's, you know, breaking any sort of protocols. You know, a lot of what we'll see on campus are people wearing masks, are people practicing the uh, social distancing, right? There's a lot of people sitting outside. And because we have so many different areas in which you can hang out outside, you know, you can see people just kind of in, you know, different spots doing their own thing. And so... Being smart. Yeah, being smart, you know, and so and t- at times you'll see one or two people in a little area and they're socially distanced, but they're doing homework. So yeah. they're both, you know, talking and hanging out. And so there's a lot of that here. I tell you, you, you could practically do that on the phone if you had to or on FaceTime I mean, if you had to. Yeah, I do. I'm so. sure you know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, now, how has the college done? Now, are you in class or are you in virtual class, which was the question that Sienna was wrestling with? You know, is it worth going or... You know, so where, where is your edu- the studies? Where is that? At? So I have like sort of an AB kind of system going on. And so in some classes, uh, half the class will be going in and the other half will be online and then vice versa. And so it really depends on the professor and on the class and, you know, how they want to go about it. Most of my classes are online. Um, I think I'm really just here, you know, for the experience, like I said, you know, to really figure out what it's like to, be back in society, be back around, you know, a lot of people go from there to make my own choices about how I want to be safe and be smart and stuff like that. And so um, for the most part, a lot of our classes are online, um, but, you know, you will have a couple that will, you know, make you come in. Yeah. What what a tremendous comparison uh, between uh, what Sienna was saying and what mm-hmm. Naeem was saying. And, and, and you can understand fully both points of view. Naeem is getting the um, experience. He's been able to stay safe. Uh, how has the college done in terms of if you go in class, you feel safe in class, there's enough space. They uh, give you, you know, en- enough of the concept to make sure that, that everybody's taken care of. I think they're doing pretty well. You know, I think they're doing well, especially in the dorms. Um, You know, no one is allowed to go into anyone else's dorm from another building. Even in the same dorm, you're not allowed to be going into other people's rooms and things like that. You know, uh, you have to wear a mask literally everywhere. uh, That's not your room. Um, And so, and with the AB system that I was talking about, you know, I can't really give a percentage of the class that'll be, in there, but it's a low percentage, you know? And so because these are big rooms that we have uh, and, and some of these classes are lectures and stuff like that, you know, it's great to spread out and be spaced out and have your own, you know, little area in which you can be safe, do your work, focus. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I think Hofstra's been doing okay so far. Uh, and so Carlos, it's coming right to you, man. Uh, how, how has Fordham been um, as far as uh, dealing with it? And I don't think we asked you about whether you're doing virtual or you are doing um, uh, in class. So let's talk about let, that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So Fordham does, they're doing in-person classes and they are doing the, the whole virtual thing. Um, but what my, one of my professors, Dr. Mark Nason, I don't know if you know him. I, I do know him personally. He's been on this program. so they, Perfect. Uh, yeah. What he's doing is he's hosting. And he's the one who recommended you, by the way, to come. Uh, okay. Well, there we go. Um, see, uh, he's hosting class outside. So he'll get our entire class, whoever wishes to do in person, outside on Edwards Parade, our quad. Um, and we'll all bring out folding chairs. And then he'll give us a lecture right there outside and, and tell us about the material, ask us questions. Um, so you're so, actually having class a little farther away. Frankly, the weather has been okay. Um, right. and so, and so it's been, um, you know, it's, it's frankly probably a little nicer than sitting mm-hmm. in the class. No, hundred percent. Right. And you know, I'm doing, I'm doing all virtual besides that class. Um, so, and, and how are they? I, I forget what's your major here. 
I'm a political science major. Political science major. And so how's that going? You're learning something? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think just echoing the sentiments of, of Sheila, right? It's, it's very, um, it's not the same, you know, as, as being in a classroom. You know, me personally, I crave, like, human interaction. I need to be there with the teacher. I need to be there conversing with, with other students and just feeling, you know, the presence in the room versus over online, right? It's kind of that A-B system um, that he was talking about where it's just like okay, half the students will meet on online, the other half of the students will meet in person in a class. Um, and then you know, there's a disconnect there. And then I have to watch all these lectured PowerPoints online, which are like an hour, two hours plus long. And I'm just like, and, okay. And it's very easy. You know, if you're there in person, you can kind of deal with it. And even if you, yeah. if you daydream a moment, there's other people in the room and you <laughs> get back into it. But if you're sitting alone, staring at that box, woo. We have my, I, I want to ask about social life and we're going to get everybody in on it. Um, uh, so, and, and we'll start with you, Carlos. Um, uh, you talked about the need for being near people. Now I'm a married man. So I live with my wife and through this whole thing, at least we had somebody to talk to. Um, are you, are other college students kind of like there is a magnetism eventually? Hey, I got, I got to be with somebody or is there enough virtual stuff that you, 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 you know, deal with it? I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's been rough, been rough around here. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, different groups of friends, right. That, you know, have really distanced from each other because of, of all this going on. We haven't seen each other in, in a while. Um, the relationships are, you know, they're dropping, like people are breaking up because long distance just didn't work out for them. Um, so it's, it's been really hard on, in terms of, in terms of social life here and, wow. Um, in terms of gathering, like, what do we do when we're in college? We like to gather. We like to hang out. And, um, that, that's, how- that's frankly half of it. And frankly, it's a large part of it because, I, I mean, I'm a believer that education is a lot larger than in the classroom or in front of the computer. It's also about, you know, development. Um, Sienna, um, uh, as a Lehman College student, I remember, I remember my Lehman College days belonging to clubs and, you know, do, and you, you were a, a very active person in a uh, sorority and all that kind of stuff. Um, Is is this uh, like a really big problem from a social Uh, point of view? It is, it was, it took a lot to adapt to it. So um, like, so um, being part of a sorority, I had to, we had to adapt to virtual events and having, um, so having a good turnout was really hard to make people show up. And it was just really a hard transition in the beginning. And um, similar to what Carlos said, it's really hard. It was really hard in the beginning as well, being far away from friends and just, it was just a really hard transition to come, you know, completely do a 360. You know, there there was a story in the Times a little while back that talked about um, uh, the effect of the social distance. And, and, you know, they they looked at it from a global perspective, uh, how it makes us all feel. And uh, I guess uh, we got to ask Sienna uh, certainly the same thing. So you're completely divorced from your college and all your friends. Well, of course, again, the virtual thing helps. It's got to help. Um, just talk to me about um, the whole friend thing. Well, most of my friends actually made the same decision to stay home this semester. So we've done a good job of just like, you know, FaceTiming and texting and just keeping in touch that way. Um, but fortunately for me, like I'm also working while going to school and, uh, I work with my best friend. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, so I get to see her. Yeah. So, um, you know, I get to see her a lot, which is cool. And also, you know, like work with my coworkers and stuff. So, um, so you've been okay. Yeah, I've been okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, very, very interesting. Uh, Naeem, now you've already addressed the, the social thing, but um, Hofstra, I don't know how many students Hofstra has. They got thousands of students. It would, yeah. I guess it would be nice to get outside your circle a little bit, you know, right? Uh, do I have that right? It definitely would be. Um, <laughs> it definitely would be. I mean, it would be for anyone who just who's in college. You know, I feel especially for, you know, freshmen, who are, you know, living on campus and have to deal with this and, you know, can't have stuff like, you know, welcome week events and, you know, stuff like that. So I feel for everyone, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. You know, I feel like everyone overall is, or majority of people are making the right choices, right? But it, at the end of the day, it's how you want to go about it. And, you know, I just established pretty early on uh, in my moving back in 
that, you know, I'm going to be doing my own thing, really, doing my own thing here. And that, you know, whoever in my room wanted to do their own thing with me, at least here, you know, I'm open to that, too. And, you know, I want to go around the room and, let, you know, we don't have a ton of time, but I want to ask, and Naeem, we'll start with you. What's the education here? Uh, what's the lesson learned that you take into the future as you move out of, um, uh, you know, eventually out of college? Uh, so this is just a big adjustment for me. Um, there's a lot going on, you know, personally in my life. And so on top of that, on top of having to choose between education and health, you know, it's really just about staying focused. You know, it's hard to, you know, like we've said, go back and watch some of these two hour lectures that, you know, you're not really supposed to be in for because of the AB system to keep everything safe. And, and to really stay focused, to want to do that, to want to do the work after watching these videos and stuff like that. It's tough. It's an adjustment. Um, but, you know, I'm doing a great job so far of just, uh, like, checking myself, you know, keeping myself on track, you know, making sure that, you know, I'm making every class and doing everything that I have to do. And, you know, it's just uh, – it's been a good well, way for me to keep myself on track. Th that is a tremendous thing. So even though it's not great, you know, I mean, I could use other words of what it is, um, <laughs> describe what it is, but there is, a, a, you know, th there's an education in there. So now you learn how to do that, for example. Uh, uh, let's go to you, Carlos, so your thoughts? Um, you know, we, we're all on pause right now. Society's on pause and it's causing us to focus on what truly matters to us. Um, whether it be in our community, whether it be our family, and whether it be ourselves. What do we want to work on? Our craft. Um, do we want to hone in on that or do we want to reevaluate? Do we want to change that? What do our leaders want to look like? Um, and I think everyone should go out and vote. November, very important. And um, that's what I've learned. There you go. Uh, you know, there is something in here, as tough as it is, there is. Uh, so uh, let's see, um, uh, Sheila, what, what about for you? I think the biggest thing I'm taking from this is um, a realization of what type of student I am and how I have to learn to adjust to certain situations. We can't always, you know, have it, you know, straightforward and, you know, perfect the way we want it to and things don't work out that way. So I think uh, the biggest lesson I've learned is just to adapt and, you know, accept it and try to make the best out of it. I'm, I'm smiling because, boy, is that ever a Bronx girl. Man, she gets it <laughs> and she's going to fight. And that's the way it's going to be, right? I yeah. mean, you know, I, we, we lived here all our lives. This is who we are. You, you really Literally. articulate beautifully. Sienna, you get the final word. Um, for you, uh, what, what do you take with you? Um, I think mainly to just, like, you know, make the most of this time. I mean, this is an unprecedented event that we're all experiencing. And, you know, it's going to – it's now a permanent part of our history. And I think, like, what you do with this time really – shows your character and you know like what you're capable of because yeah like these are hard times but like you yourself have the ability and the opportunity to work on different things and you know I feel like despite all the things that are happening like there's still opportunity for growth and you know further development and God Sienna yeah. we, we do gotta go and and so <laughs> and you are an intern here you can appreciate the the, the time we're in Listen, I'm going to give you all applause. You give me hope. I will get behind all of you, and you lead, and I will be happy to follow. Uh, Sienna, uh, Sheila, Naeem, and uh, Carlos, thank you so much. And uh, folks, next week it'll be Jamal Bowman, who's the Democratic Party candidate in the 16th Congressional District. Wholly different show. But, but don't we get energy from our college kids? Yeah, don't look past them. They, they, they are it. And you heard why here tonight. See you. Good night.